Bassett. Hello, uh, my name is Kazka Sozi. Today we're going to look at compression. We're in Studio One, version 4.5. I've got a, a simple tune here. So I'll switch over to the mixer and I'm going to look at this track here, uh, which is the vocal. There's no effect here. So I'm going to insert a compressor. I'll just get the generic compressor here. This is the stock uh, compressor plugin that comes with the uh, program. There are five different parameters or controls that we have to look at in order to digest and understand compression. And the first one is this here, which is the ratio. And then we have threshold right here. Then this side, we have the attack, the release, and finally the gain, or sometimes they call it makeup gain. Uh, so those are the five that we're going to concentrate on in this particular video. Um, that's not to say that all the others we see around are not important. But in order to understand compression, the other five are the key controls. And on most compressors, they're the ones you'll find. Sometimes, actually, you'll even find less. So the others we'll only touch on very briefly. Um, let's start with uh, what really compression is. In music production, when we talk of compression, what we mean is that we're taking down the loudness of the peaks of a signal and then bringing up the volume of the whole sound. And in so doing, we decrease the dynamics. You can imagine if someone, for example, was singing something very loud and then singing some other parts very quietly, what we would do by applying compression, we would make those very loud bits go down a little bit and then turn up the volume of the whole thing. And in so doing, the quieter bits will be now louder but the louder bits won't get too loud because they have been taken down and thereby the dynamics uh, in the performance will be decreased. And this um, is uh, in many times desirable in production, even though uh, for performers sometimes it isn't because those dynamics may have been intentional. Back in the day when I used to mix on an analog uh, mixer, I literally had to dance with the mix. I would be playing around with faders as the mix was going. When things are loud, I pull the fader down. When they're quiet, you push it up. Uh, so you're kind of dancing with the mix to make sure that the dynamics are correct. And in a sense, a compressor also does that, but more instantaneously, it's faster at achieving that, basically balancing the dynamics of the music. So uh, we'll move forward. Uh, just make sure that if you're listening to this, that you're using a set of good headphones because some of the adjustments that we might be making uh, might be too subtle to hear if you don't have a good pair of headphones. In understanding the controls, I'm going to start with threshold not because it's the most important, but because it determines that which will be compressed. Basically, the threshold determines at what level the compressor will start to act. So this plugin we put in will only start to act on the level of signal that goes above this number here. So if it's at zero dB, and then the signal plays but doesn't make it to zero dB, then nothing will happen because the threshold is too high. The number here determines what will be acted upon. So let me just play the signal now, and you'll see that when I take the threshold down up to the point where the signal is actually hitting, then we are able to actually affect a change. Oh, O sukiri day to gambant in nimbang. God is my witness. What this is saying, as you can see there, anything above the threshold, anywhere where the level is playing above the number that is here, that amount will be compressed. Anything below it will not be touched. The threshold control just helps us to choose what will be compressed. So you choose just those loud bits that you need to be compressed. If you want the whole sound to be compressed, then you take the threshold right down such that everything that is coming into the compressor is being compressed. 
And then we have here the ratio. Uh, the ratio here determines the amount of compression. And in very simple terms, if it's one to one, as it shows here, then no compression is happening at all. Basically, what is coming into the compressor is what is going out. So it's exactly the same. And as you increase going the other way, it starts to get compressed more and more. So the farthest the other end is the most compression you're going to get. And if you see this line here on the graph, the more I move the other side, the more it's pushing down. And basically, that's indicating how much it's going to push that sound down. And you'll notice that it only pushes it as far down as where this number, the threshold, was set. Meaning, it's only affecting that which is above what number was set originally. And the effect of how much the ratio is affecting the signal is going to be shown in this line here, this area here. And if you see, if I click it, it says dynamic range reduction, basically how much it will be reduced. You see, a lot of times people think of compression as something that gets things louder, but the truth is it actually cuts things down. Basically, it takes the peaks down, which allows you to take the volume up of the whole thing. So if I play it, you'll see that as I raise it, as I raise the ratio, there's going to be more compression being applied and it will be indicated by this lighting up here, which is showing the gain reduction, like push down on the signal. You can clearly hear there that the further I took it, the more it became compressed, like like where everything sounds exactly the same in terms of how loud it is. But the only thing you're compressing is that which is above the level that you set with the threshold. And then we have a look at the attack here. Now the attack is quite simply how soon the compressor is engaged, how soon it starts to work. When you're this side and to, to your left, it acts faster. And this is measured in uh, milliseconds. So we have like 0.1 milliseconds. So that is a very immediate compressor. It engages as soon as it hears the sound that is above the threshold, it kicks in. And as we raise it the other way, it kind of engages a little bit later. So it allows some of the transients that hit first to pop through, then it acts. The times when you want this to, to act that way because you don't always want the compressor to engage immediately. If it does, sometimes it can kill the original character of the sound. Then let's have a look at this one, which is the release. And the release basically works on how long the compressor is engaged. If it's this side, then the compressor is going to stop as soon as the time that is indicated there. In this case, one millisecond. So if it's this side, it's very short. The other side is longer, meaning that if I want the compressor to engage on the sound much longer, I would put it the other way. So it compresses for a longer period of time. The release allows you to set for how long the compressor is going to be engaged. Lastly, we have here uh, makeup gain, which here they're calling simply gain. This is provided because once you've compressed using whatever ratio you've used here, you'll find that your sound is now quieter because all the peaks have been chopped down. So the sound generally feels quieter. And then you have to match that up again by bringing up the sound so that your new unified sound is now loud enough to be heard. And maybe this is one of the reasons why people think actually that compressors are about making things loud because the general volume of the things that were quieter is now going to go up by using uh, this makeup gain, even though it by itself is not exactly compression. Compression is what was happening by the ratio, not by the makeup gain. The makeup gain just stabilizes the sound back to a volume that you can hear after you have taken down the peaks. Uh, we're going to play around with this compressor to start and get some results. So I'll play the voice. Oh, God is my witness. Oh, 
O sukiri day, to gamba nti nimba. So I'm trying to make that day really hard. O sukulumye, teria kusinga. O chira balala. O sukiri day, to gamba nti nimba. Yeah. God is my witness. Uh, so there, I've set like a threshold that is getting some of those high peaks, the stuff that is above this point, above minus 21, uh, is picking that up, and then it is compressing it down by the level that I've set here, and then it's doing that not too fast, because if I put it too fast, it will engage too quickly and remove some of the attacks that I still want within the voice, like de. I want that to be hard enough. So if the attack is too fast, it will grab it, and then I won't have that percussiveness that I want. Oh, sukiri day, which I want to really hit. Day. If the attack is too fast, then it will curtail it, uh, which I don't want. So I'll let the attack be a little bit loose on it. So it, it lets the initial impact through, but immediately after that, it grabs it. And this is uh, helped by you can see a light here that says look ahead whereby the program is looking ahead kind of studying the audio that is coming up preparing to apply compression according to this attack but on a signal that it already has understood what is coming so it's not just acting in that moment it's looking a little bit ahead and now i'm going to play it and then try to hear what difference there is between what i had before i put the compressor on and then what i have now Oh, sukulumye, teria kusinga, So, you can quite hear that the, compress the compressor has actually taken the volume down, so I need to do some makeup gain. Basically, when it took the peaks down, then the, we have the whole level sounds like it's a little bit below level, so I need to raise it to match what I had. Oh, sukulumye, teria kusinga, A little bit more. Oh, sukulumye, Teria kusinga, o chira balala. O sukiri day, to gamba nti nimba. Yeah, so that is quite, uh, it's not very subtle compression, but it's not extreme either. It's just grabbing some of those high bits. But then it has also that emphasis, it's making... Uh, the harder sounds sound extremely firm, which I want for this kind of vocal. Um, I, I don't do much compression on uh, vocals because I like the performance to remain in a particular way. But when you're trying to make it sit within, especially a pop kind of mix, it really helps get that vocal to be a bit more punchier within the mix. So let's have a listen to it with the song playing. O sukulumye, teria kusinga, o chira balala. So I'm going to bring in some reverb here so that we can hear how that sounds. O sukulumye, teria kusinga, o chira balala. O sukiri day, to gamba nti nimba. God is my witness. Okay. Uh, now I want us to look at another part here. Let's look at a different instrument. Uh, let's go to the bass here. Uh, we're going to call up uh, a similar compressor. And within, if you're using Studio One, if you click here on Recent, you can find some of the plugins you've recently used. And I just used one of those. So I've inserted it as well. Same thing. Uh, so here... We could start with a, a preset uh, and then tweak the preset to fit our needs. So I choose a bass guitar and, you know, these are the settings they've set. I'm going to, I want us to first listen to it as it is. Let me solo it for a second. Yeah, so it's not like out of balance or anything like that. It's a, it's a nicely round sound. But... I would like to have it to be even warmer than that. At the same time, to have a little bit of punchiness to it. And the compressor will help to get it to that point. First of all, uh, this pressure has been set to 10 to 1, I would say. And the attack is a little bit late, so it's allowing in 
the first transients to kick in. As far as the threshold is concerned, this is the first thing I'm going to want to change because uh, when you're using a preset, it's impossible for the preset to, or whoever set the preset, to know uh, the level of your signal coming in. So they couldn't have known how loud my signal is, so how can they know what threshold to set? So I'm going to set the threshold first, as in, at what point do I want the compressor to be engaged? And then I'll deal with the other stuff later. And you can see, because of where the threshold is set, it's actually very little it's getting compressed. So I want it to come in a little bit. That's cool. Um, I actually want more compression than this, so I'm gonna raise this up a little bit, and I'm gonna also ask it to act a little bit faster than this. It's just too late, so uh, a lot of stuff is getting through. By the way, a good way to, to think about what you need to set on your uh, makeup gain is to look at the gain reduction, that how much has been decreased by the compression. That usually is a, a good indicator of roughly how much you should actually make up on your gain. So let's hear it now in context. Even the quieter notes are like coming through more because of that makeup gain we made. You, you're getting to hear all the notes with some balance. There's not too much uh, variation within the performance. And this is a, a very useful thing, especially in a, a lot of uh, uh, modern music production. Even though for some performances you wouldn't want to do this because if a musician has uh, decidedly made certain notes louder f for purposes of expression, that are important to what the music is saying, and then you smack a compressor on it, what you're doing is actually removing the musician's performance. In this case, I knew very well that actually I wanted this bass to actually be very balanced. There's still those very minor inconsistencies, and the compressor helps to iron those out. We can further improve this compression by adding yet another compressor on top of this. If I go in and call up uh, the arrow compressor this here it looks quite different but it has the same key controls you have your threshold here and then you've got your ratio here and then you have your attack and your release and then the makeup gain why would I apply another compressor on top of <laughs> a, a compressor that is already there is to further unify the sound that I'm trying to get I need to get a very compressed sound without it sounding too compressed. If I did it with just one compressor, like the original one we had here, if I click this, which is still running, by the way, I didn't switch it off. If we did all the compression we needed with this, I would end up overcooking on the, uh, on the level, on the threshold and all that, and it would give a very squashed, unfavorable sound. Uh, dare I say it, possibly even unmusical. But if we add another compressor on top of it, I can do some extra compression on top in a subtle way that is not going to be too noticeable and it will add that extra element that I need without over squashing the sound.
this idea of having what they call serial compression, where several compressors are in a row, makes for a very good sound. It makes the sound sit in better, and you can't hear the, the artifacts of actual compression because compression can bring other elements that you don't want within your music. If you overcook it, it can distort the, the, the sound. It can create certain overtones, especially in sounds like bass. It can make certain elements come out you would not desire within the music. If you do it in, a, in little doses uh, through serial compression, then you end up with a, a much better and desirable sound than if you try to do the whole job with one compressor. And a lot of times you'll find that uh, people will compress, say, for example, the bass would be compressed going into the amplifier as you're tracking, and then there's maybe a, a compressor as it goes into the desk. And then compression in the mixing with a couple of compressors, so that could, could be all together maybe three or four compressors. And as the song is going out, on your output bus, you could put another compressor. So I'll call this up, which I'd already thrown on top of there, which is, so this particular one is actually on the output, uh, whereby I can compress the, the, generally the whole song. And in so doing, <laughs> of course, everything else that was being compressed is being compressed again. So that could be serially, we could be talking about six compressors from the point of input of the signal when it was being recorded. So it's better to compress in different stages rather than throwing on one massive compressor to try and do the whole job there. You can see quite clearly that compression has a great use within uh, production, especially at the mixing stage, but it's very useful all along the way. We talked of like serial compression and the techniques and principles I've just explained here apply in any DAO, any digital audio workstation that you use will we'll have a stop plugin that can do a good job. This particular song wasn't actually recorded or mixed within Studio One. It was uh, recorded and mixed in uh, in Cubase. I'll provide the link so you can listen to original mix. So the principles I used to compress the elements were the same, even though I was using different plugins. And you'll find on some plugins, the controls are maybe named slightly differently or ordered differently, or in some cases, they won't have everything. They will compound two together. You find that the input gain and threshold are, are kind of like one, one knob. And they maybe the, the ratio is just simply called compression and within it it also has attack and release within one same diode so different compressors work differently and we will investigate further in the next uh, lesson about compression i'll kind of talk about other different types of plugins that work a bit differently and we'll also look at more advanced applications of compression uh, my name is Kaskasozi, and thank you so much for listening okay take care now bye